Okay, there we go. Okay, so um, if you make the bird bigger, the, the thing is, is that your proportions have to stay the same, right? So if you make the bird bigger, then the head has to get bigger, the body has to get bigger, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you can use like a, pen, a brush or often a pencil to really figure out your proportions. So if I take my brush and figure out my proportions from head to tail, um, it's about the length of the red part of my brush, right? So then I look and if I take the neck with the head, um, the neck with the head, let's see, let me see right here. Let me start doing some proportional work right quickly. Okay, so the body is about two heads. Yeah, roughly. So if I'm taking the proportions, then I'm breaking this and it is about two heads and then the tail is a little longer. So that is that will tell you the quick proportions. Mm -hmm. um, whenever I'm drawing, you can see I like quickly take my proportions all the time. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start with my head. And you know what, personally, I'm okay if my tail goes off the page. Okay. That's me personally, I'm okay with that. Sorry. If the tail goes it's off the head. page. Oh. Yeah, goes off the page, yeah. It'll give us something, it'll help like lead our eye into the uh, painting itself. Um, I can already tell that my head is a little too close to the right, because like this space and then this space. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move it over. This is why we do quick sketches, because then if you make a mistake, you spent 30 seconds or you spent 10 mm -hmm. seconds on a drawing instead of um, like a minute with all the details and stuff. So for the head, you're just making a circle? To I'm start? just making a circle to start, yes. So what now, what I'm doing right now is called, um, I don't know the actual term for it. I call it um, a foundation drawing. So basically I am figuring out my proportions and just creating shapes based off those proportions. Mm -hmm. So if I take my brush, I can see that my bra that my head from the silver part goes about here. So then I'm gonna go under, make a note, go under and make another mark. And this is, oh, I lost that right here. So this is how big my body is going to have to be roughly. And it's, yeah, this is how big it's gonna be. And I'm looking at this and I think this parrot's a little bit cockeyed. So like this shoulder, I'm gonna call it the wing shoulder is um, like it, there's a lot more body on the left side than there is on the right side. So these are things that I'm looking at while I'm creating my drawing, which is very automatic to me, but I'm trying to help you guys understand my thought process. Right yeah. So this is this is it's also known as a gesture drawing. So I'm just kind of getting my composition right the first time. Right? Before I add any details, I need to make sure my body is proportionate with the head. And then I'm just gonna come out here and kind of create a tail. Because the tail can be as long or as short as I want it to be. And mine is just gonna go right off the page. Which tells me that I have like all of, you don't have to draw this, but I'm just showing you, I have all of this to create like a really nice background, if you will, because this is like the background, but this is, there's too much background and the colors are too similar. So there's not enough contrast here, which is one of the things I don't like about my original painting is they blend in too much, right? There's, there's no, um, yeah, there's, there's no uh, contrast. There's not enough contrast in colors. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating my head. What I'm noticing is that this head is more of a square shape. 
So I'm going to kind of create this angle that comes up, right? So I just created this little angle shape right there. And then it comes in a little bit. The beak comes out of there. And then this carves around and then connects with the shoulder. And then actually, um, this actually comes around, but then there's also a little bit of a neck right there as well. So I'm accounting for that neck. And as you can see, sketches are very messy, right? And they, like you, if you watch me drawing, I'm constantly like going over and over and over again my lines until I'm happy with them. And that's okay. That if, if um, ever you walk through, like one of my favorite exhibits at galleries is when they show like the sketches and the processes of those pieces, because you can see how messy and how organic the sketching process actually is. It's just a jumble of lines and it's perfect and I love it. And it helps you, it really helps you think, um, it really helps you see into the artist's thought process as well. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna do the beat. I'm looking at the negative space in between this area. So I'm actually kind of looking at this shape right here that it creates inside. Does that make sense? And I'm gonna try and get like copy as best as I can that shape. So I'm looking right here. Um, okay, so I got this kind of shape. And then it stops about right before. So there's like a little bit of a gap in between. He's got a, a pretty prominent brow line, if you will. And then it comes down. Um, this, I can tell because I'm comparing the two that this is too much of, um, it extends too much. So I'm actually gonna bring it in. And then, so if I erase that, then I have more of that shape that I'm looking for. Is it helping you, me walking you through my thought yeah. processes? Okay. Yeah. yeah, the beak is hard. It's a very precise shape. Yeah. Yes. This is why it's okay to go over and over and over the same shape until you have about what you're looking for and then you can erase all of your other shapes. Yeah. Like when I draw circles, my circles when I'm drawing them are like if I'm trying to get the proper circle, I'm going over and over and over and over that line and it's getting really thick, but I'm making sure that like until I get like the circle that I want. And then I can go in and erase all my other lines because it usually starts out as an oval and then I have to add to it and stuff. So all parts of the drawing process. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is this white part. I'm going to get that white part. It starts at where the top of the beak is, right? And then it kind of goes up cross and I am with my pencil going to just draw a line straight down and I can tell that it's about a third into the body if that makes sense so what I've done is I've created like a line in my head from the far edge of this and gone down into the body and I can see that it's about a third into the body does that make sense what I just did to me with white. Yes, with white. correct. So the farthest point of the white part is about a third into the body of the width of the um of the parrot. 
which means the back of that the line back of that verb there's more space than the front correct back. yes correct yeah so if you divide the parrot into three so if i go here one two three then I mean, that's wrong. That's not how it's going to go at all because my proportions, I changed my proportions. So, um, never mind. <laughs> but whatever works for you, right? Um, let's do it more for the head. So, if I divide my head up, then it goes about halfway in between in the head. Okay. Does that make more sense? Okay. So, if I look for the halfway part of my head, that we're about right here. So, it comes out, but then this line is also angled. So the top line is a little bit angled where this bottom line is a little bit shorter. So pay attention to that, right? This isn't, it's not a line that goes straight down. It goes in a little bit as an angle. So it goes, see how my pencil, if you line it up, is 100% on an angle right now? So I'm gonna go right about there. That looks good to me. But if you can get this right, then your painting is going to be right. So like we're taking a lot of time here because this is what needs to look right in order for our painting to look right. I actually want to move mine in a little bit. That's my own personal pre uh, preference. There you go. I'm happy with that. Looks parody. Okay. So next I'm going to get the eye. Actually, next I'm going to do the beak. The because um so if I erase this line right here that connects the beak. Notice here how it comes in on a little bit of a triangle point. It's not straight down, right? It's a little bit pointed. Does that make sense? And the point is at like the halfway point. So if I go about halfway in between, right, that's aligned. And then at where the top of where the beak meets the head, I come in a little bit and create a triangle. And then I create another triangle at where the bottom of the beak meets the head. Make sense? How I did that? <laughs> yeah, so it's like almost creating like a, an arrow that's pointing in towards the head. And then you can just erase that line. Take your time, breathe through it. <laughs> yeah. I'm also going to walk around and help you guys if you're not happy with it, okay? Until you are happy with it. You're gonna be happy. That is, I Don't say that. that. <laughs> Mitt, you can be good enough, right? We Let's subscribe to the good enough theory. Okay, okay. <laughs> Accept whatever it is. Yeah. Always could be better. Always could be better, absolutely. Perfection doesn't exist in the art world. No, never ever. Never ever. And perfection is a subjective idea, anyways. <laughs> okay, so then the next thing I'm going to do is this eye. Now that I have where the beak ends. So, okay, let's do this. I'm going to create a line that goes from where this point is to the middle of the top of, of this white part, okay? And then I'm going in the middle of that to put a circle as my eyeball. Did that help, that line? No? Helped you? Okay, perfect. Above line or on line? 
Um, it's halfway, so it's halfway in the line. So then I'm gonna erase that line. And now I have an eyeball. Okay, so we're gonna get into details of the face now because parrots have very distinctive details on the face. So there's a little bit of a black triangle right here above the beak. And then down here, there's like a big black triangle, right? So it's kind of a line that goes straight across. Do you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. But it kind of connect it almost connects to the beak right here. So just yeah, just like that kind of thing. Actually a little bit more more like that. And because I just did this line, I can now tell that the proportions of my face are actually incorrect. So I'm just going to quickly fix that issue because now I'm looking at what this black shape is and then what this whole white shape is, right? So I'm looking at the negative space that these lines create. And then I'm erasing this, and there we go. That looks nicer. I can tell that my parrot head is too close, so I'm not going to get these red marks in there. That's fine. I'm not worried about that. Like we said, we're good enough in this painting, right? But what I am gonna do is I'm going to create these three lines. So this one, two, three, right there. Because that really adds to the parrot look, right? So what I'm gonna do in this top corner, I'm creating a line, just, just a line of our guide mark right now. And then I'm going, around so i'm kind of going in around my eye right so i'm going in and then i'm going to go in a little bit as well and then i'm going to go around this eye shape does that make sense how i did that it's a little bit of an organic shape uh, yep i'm i'm <laughs> Yes, and they all go into that top right corner of the white spice, space of the head. And then underneath it, there's just a line that kind of follows it. And then underneath that, there's just like a little bit of almost what I would say is a U shape. Oop, there we go. I mean, is there some kind of ears? No, I think that's just the feathers. I think it's just the way that the feathers are layered on top of each other. I don't have parrot, so I have no idea. <laughs> These are specifically a macaw, I think. <laughs> I don't remember. That's okay. I didn't like orange just either. <laughs> there you go. It's tough when you have um, someone who has been painting for 25 years to compare to, you know? And it's, it's especially when you're in the learning process and you haven't built up that like self efficacy or the like self confidence in the craft it's almost impossible not to compare yourself to people who are masters. I did it for years, 
years and years and years and years and years. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create the line of this little red um, line right there. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna go in and kind of just create a little bit of a triangle. That's it. I'm just creating a little bit of a triangle off of that. Ugh. Where I want to put my elbows on the table puts it totally off the page, so. So the last part we're gonna do is we're just gonna do the wing because it's like kind of sh sticking off the side. And then that's basically it. And then we're gonna start painting um, after I check them all. Okay, so are we okay with the heads for now? We can move on from the heads? Okay. Yeah. So from there, I'm gonna bring this in. So following this line, right? It doesn't start in the middle. We're following this line and we're just going to curve this down and around. So it creates almost like this bowl shape if you were to like put a straight line. So it's almost like a sideways U kind of, or um, yeah, it's just a curved line. And then a little bit halfway in, then I'm just going to also curve it, but the curve is not gonna be as heavily defined. And then just add, make this point. On the other side, I'm just going to round out that shoulder, if you will. And then I'm gonna bring that line down and then curve it in. And then it goes down into the tail. And I just went through the the wing so that I so that this um this line wasn't broken and now we can erase that line because this wing needs to be looking like it's in front of this body and so that line will be broken. And then the other side is just gonna come down to, again, a point that goes off the page. And I'll probably fade it. Nice. It's in. Okay, perfect. What I'm probably gonna do is I'm probably going to fade it so that it it's like more of like a vignette style where it like hints at going off the page instead of actually going off the page, which I'll show you guys how to do if you wanna do that as well. Okay, so now we're done our parrots. You can clean up your lines if you want, make them lighter. I'm going to walk around. I'm going to keep my lines because I kind of like the way that like it looks when you can see the sketch marks underneath the painting. All right, how do you feel about yours? Okay, why are you nervous? I think it seems a little like squashed. I yeah. am. Okay. Yes. So the thing I would do would be move this out a little bit. Is yes. my head big enough? Your head is big enough? Yeah. But if you just, do you mind if I take it? No, no, no. Okay. So if you bring it out and then a little bit.
and then third this one. Right. So I'm going to reposition it. Yeah, Yes. Okay, like that about our many hands and people. No, I like this. I wouldn't change anything about this. But, but it's not one third. It, it, we're going to go up, you know, this part is a uh, way, right? Yeah, so you can just kind of go in more. If you like that better. Oh, okay. That's your choice. You can yeah. swallow the touch. Nice, you did a nice job. Thank you. Are you happy with it? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm not happy because I don't have a plastic rubber, you know, that one for the heavy crayon. Okay. One. You can still do it with that. If you want to no, this. but because I have one from Romania. Okay. Somewhere. Okay. Somewhere. Yes. Somewhere. And I have found them. I think I have bought two. I don't know. So I keep. Just drop back and forth. Okay. It slowly picks up. Good. If you want to do that, you don't even have to. I put to help. Thank you. Help with what? It looks great. It makes sense here. I think it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I would just um. The only thing that I would probably do. Let's just yes. Let's bring this out a little more. Let me make this line less impulse. Okay. That's it. That's the only thing I would do. This looks great. And this is because I kind of hear it goes small, but that's okay. It's yeah, this tail goes small. Oh, okay. How do you feel about your tail? <laughs> it's TD, but it's good. Yeah, I like it. You're just going to have a lot more background. Yeah, I will have one. That's okay. Looks good, guys. Everyone, I barely had to make any corrections. Nicely done. You guys should all be proud of yourselves. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is we are going to do a wash of wet on wet within this bird, and then we're going to build on top of it. Um, that means that we have to have our colors ready to go. So what I'm, we're using, I'm going to mix together my cadmium red with my alizarin crimson to give me like less of an orange red because right now my cadmium red is too orange for my liking. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of my alizarin crimson and mix it together to give it more of like um, a rich red, if you will. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> We're mixing together the red right now. So, so the red and yellow, did you say? Or just I did red? the red. Yeah, I did my cadmium red with my alizarin crimson. So okay. like my okay. orange red with my pink red. Okay. Yeah, just to give it more of like a like a rich red color. The yellow, I'm just going to use my cadmium yellow. I don't need to mix that at all. Depending on your palettes, you could use a hooker's green if you have one. If you don't, you can take either viridian green and mix it with sap green, or you could take sap green and mix it with ultramarine blue. So you have a few options for the greens. We're looking for a slightly emeraldy green. So for the greens, I'm going to take my Viridian 
And as you can see, it's very, 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 very bright. And I'm going to mute that a little bit with a little bit of burnt umber. I want to see what happens. If I add burnt umber to it. And now it needs a little more yellow. What, what do you think I need to add to this? Um, so is that a viridian green? No, it's just a dark. They just have the dark green. Can you see it? What's it's called? just called dark green. It's just called dark green. How original. Yeah, I think so. So it's called deep green. green. Oh, deep green. And okay. it's light green. Yeah. You might have to add a little bit of yellow to that. Okay. So if I'm taking some cadmium yellow, I'm just adding a little bit to it. It'll brighten it up a little bit. There you go. That's a nice color. And a lot of times that's my thought process with mixing colors is like, let's see how this goes. <laughs> The, the burnt umber and green? For if I had a viridian green, yes, I added burnt umber and then I added cadmium yellow. And it gave me this like really beautiful color, really. Yeah. This beautiful green. If my red is too brown, would I add a little purple? You'd add more red. Mm -hmm. red. Yep, add more red. This color, okay. And then last is just a uh, ultramarine blue, which if you have an ultramarine blue, you don't have to mix it all. So I mixed a red because my cadmium red was too orange for my liking and my viridian, uh, my, my alizarin crimson is too pink for my liking. So I mix them together to kind of balance them out till I get a medium color, a medium red in between. My cadmium yellow is good. That's already the color that I'm looking for. I don't have to mix it. Oh. My green, uh, my sap green was too olivey for my liking and my viridian green was too emerald for my liking. So I ended up taking my viridian green, adding brown to it to darken it a bit and kind of mute the color. And then I added yellow to bring it into more of a limey color. And then the last one is my ultra, my ultramarine blue is already the blue that I'm looking for, so I don't have to mix that. Does that make sense? Okay. <sighs> color theory is a beast, guys. <laughs> And I've never taught it before, so um, I'm kind of just winging it. One day I'll teach it and then I'll be able to be more effective with my color theory. I don't think my green is should I pick? Oh, I'll finish. That's right. This green? Yeah, that's some of the blue. Yeah. Let me know when everyone's got the colors that they're happy with. I'm just cleaning up the paint palette right now. It's always in a state of mess. Okay. Mm 
Yeah, they were good. I think so. It's a little better. Yeah, okay. I like it. Yeah. I would add a little more of this over okay. there just because it's very pinky. Nice, nice colors. Yeah, some of me. You got two blue. No, yeah. Blue yeah. and red. The red looks good. Yeah. I would add a little bit of yellow into your green, but it is a very beautiful color. Yeah. Okay. It's nice. Do you like that color? Yeah. Do you like It's a little bit light. Uh, Yours is darker. Oh, let's just say more. It's oh, paint cool. Paint. Yeah, that's because I just have more paint. Yeah, I imagine. Yes, that's it. Uh, my my palette is well used, so um, it uh, color sits on it really nicely. The more you use your palette, the more it's going to become more porous. Uh, not porous, but it, the more it's going to become textured and it'll give the paint areas to like sit properly. Because at the beginning, it's totally flat, so the paint just kind of moves around a little bit. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to lightly, with clean water, everyone needs clean water at this point, and we are going to, I'm picking up like my number four round right now. I'm going to pick up my water and I am going to color the entire body. Not this little area of the face, but everywhere that's the red, the yellow, the green, the blue, and the red. Just not the white. Yes, all just with not the white and not the beak. Yes, all with water. So, cause we're doing a wet on wet wash, which is going to give us that like nice, like where the colors fade into one another. And this, what, what are you doing the outline with? Just your drink water? Oh, clean water. I'm doing this whole, all with like a clean wash. Yeah. We're painting our bird right now just with water. And because this goes off of the page, I'm stopping where my water goes a little bit ahead of the edge. so that I can create kind of like a fade. Using the reflection from the windows, I can tell that my painting is now decently wet. It's not cooling wet, but it's like damp wet. If it's pooling wet, you can just clean. You can just um, soak it up off your with your brush. And now I'm going to move fast so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Take your time with this. But the first one I'm going to do is the head. So I'm kind of just adding paint. I'm going to allow it to bleed. Well, oh, that's a beautiful red color. So yep, I'm going to move fast though. So I'm moving ahead of, it, of you all, allowing it to, so you should have it, it should be like kind of spreading of its own. The edges should not be sharp. They should be like, see how these like almost fade off? That's what we're looking for. That means that the paint, the page is wet enough. And then it's going to come down and then it's going to kind of create like this triangle in the back, down its back. Just like that. Okay. And now I'm moving on to my yellow underneath it. And I'm creating, I'm just going to continue with that V underneath it. Again, I'm moving fast so that I'm a step ahead of you guys. Feel free to take your time. But we also don't want our paints to dry. We don't want that wet to dry. So if it's drying and you are losing the blooming factor that happens with watercolors when 
for the wet on wet technique, go ahead and add more water to it. Followed by some green. Yep, now we're into very wet. And then I'm going in with my ultramarine blue. It's a lot. With the tail, I'm going to just cover the whole thing in kind of like a red. And then while it's wet, I'm gonna streak blue through it. I need more yellow in this. It's not yellow enough. Once I have my initial lit colors in there, I'm going to darken them a little bit. The ones that I find are not as saturated enough. Good enough. I just added it on. Yep, just on top of it. Yes, but I need to erase my lines before so I don't know what I was doing. That's okay, we're doing that off. Yeah. I'm going to keep that. Okay, so I just have so much. Yeah. So what I'm going to do. I'm just um scratching around a little bit. Okay. So right now what I'm doing is I'm lifting the paint out of the fibers of the brush. Mm -hmm. See, I and I only lift it if I'm moving like the whole body with the proper sugar. Right? Yes. That's correct. Whenever we're doing a well on one. <laughs> I'm able to do that again. This is the um, benefit of having really high quality paper is that you can do this over and over again and kind of get what to go on. Otherwise, it starts to stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it starts filling. So that's going to be the most of it again. It's going to be the most of it again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So now it's going to get better. There you go. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm not sure that the pattern of those drawings. That's okay. Yeah. But it, it's beautiful, man. Right? It's not exactly the way it's painted. The color is not. What I wish. Okay, what do you wish for? 
because you can go over it again. I know, but it's too wet because I have lost the yellow. That's okay. We can lift up uh, the green once it's dry. Yes, I I think I have to make a little bit. Not for the rest of your body, but for that yellow, yes, you do. Yeah. Nice. Well, the yellow went into the red. That's and the okay. Into the yellow. Yes, <laughs> that was what we were aiming for. Well, not this way. Yes. Just lift the way. Okay. No worries. We have to lift them out after okay. once they're dry. Yes. Yeah. But your colors are so vibrant. Um, I did the whole thing in red, and then I added in um, lines of the blue, Ooh. and it kind of creates like a little bit of a purpley, yeah, yeah, yeah. color. I'm looking at my beak and I'm realizing that that's the wrong shape, which I haven't added any paint to it yet. So I can kind of play with it. There we go. It was a little too bulbous, my beak. There you go. It's nice. This is a So that's as much color as I'm going to want out. But then what I can do brown with yellow. Which yellow do we want? The 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 second. I'm glad I asked. Because it's already wet, it's just going to sit. See how instead of like brushing it, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just dropping the color, mm -hmm. and that's going to help it remain uh, really bright and vibrant. Mm -hmm. There you go. What do you think? Better? Yeah. And now I have to wait for uh... wait until it dries, and then you can add more green to the green part. Okay. Yes. Nice. Very good. It's good, guys. How do you give that the definition of all this and just you know it's all the in your color? Yeah, so once uh that's 
that's uh, adding another layer on top of it. Yes. So right now we're locked adding our foundation uh, layer. There should be like no heavy definition yet. Everything looks kind of like blending in together. So now that it's drying, okay. Um, I have this fancy little brush that has like a really nice flat oh, okay. edge. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go in there. Wow. And then you can add more yellow on top of that, that area. Mm -hmm. okay. When it's dry. No, you can do it now because it's wet. So it'll sit in that. There you go. What do you think? Is better? Way better. Thank you. So with the tail, I added in red, and then while it was still wet, I went in with some blue and just added some blue streaks. And then it kind of created this purpley color. Because red and blue make purple. Does everybody know what a Payne's gray color is? Payne's gray? Yeah. Yes. Because so, last... yes. Okay. It's like a almost a black blue kind of thing. So we're going to make the brown version of that, which is going to be a brown blue or a brown black, black brown. Yes. Yes. So we're going to be mixing. Um, it's the same process, except we're adding more burnt umber instead of um, more ultramarine blue so our like um our mixes change a bit but it's the same it's the same starting ingredients but the recipe changes so to make that i'm going to grab my burnt umber and i'm switching to a medium brush because i like to mix my colors with a larger brush i find it holds a lot more paint and therefore i don't have to go back and forth as much so I'm grabbing my brown, lots of brown. Yeah, I'm using burnt umber. You can, yes. You're gonna have to add more blue though. Burnt umber and what was that? I'm adding burnt umber and then yes, I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine to it. I'm slowly adding in the little ultramarine because blue overpowers red really, really, really fast. So I'm just kind of picking it up and slowly adding my ultramarine. And you can already tell it's kind of getting this grayish, blackish quality, which is what we're going for. And then I'm going to add a little bit of black to it. Yep. Okay. I want it to be a little warmer, so I'm going to add more of my burnt umber. There we go. That's nice. And when you see me mixing my colors, you're going to see me doing a lot of this because what I'm looking at is the light color. So I mix it around so that the palette can show through and I'm looking at that light color over top of the white palette because that's what it's going to look like on my on my um my paper, right? 
So that's what I'm looking for. That's why I'm doing a lot of mixing and spreading my paint around a lot is so that I can see the pale color of it. And I just dirtied my clean water. That's fun. Oh no, it's okay. I have to I have to go dump this out. So thank you. Thank you for the offer. Add something to there. We have a little bit of black to it. Yeah. So I do use black uh, on my paintings, but I use it to like mix colors. I'm never going to use a pure black because that's a very man-made color. Like in nature, what looks black is often just like a really dark, dark blue or dark brown or a dark green or like a really dark color kind of thing. You need to use something called neutral green. I don't know what that is. Yeah, my sister came to work on different things. I think her theory is that a lot. Like it's, it's kind of like a black, but it's a very, um, I guess you can mix it and it uh, kind of neutralizes the color I, that it goes with. I think they've done it actually. Interesting. If you want to try it, I, I bought some. I'll bring it next to you. I'd be interested. Yeah, I've never. Learning new things all the time. I've been painting for 25 years and even I don't know half of what's out there for watercolor. You kind of like learn and then you kind of box yourself into this little corner of a paint. And it's, it's, you have to like really push yourself to like get out of your comfort zone again. Okay, so now that I have that beautiful color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, it's, it's a lot of color. And for this shadow color, for the shadow color on the beak, I want barely any. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pick some of that up and like kind of just move it a very diluted amount to its own little place, which will give me a lot more control of how much I'm picking up because I need the very slightest little bit Right, does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to pick that up and I'm just, I'm just dipping the tip of my brush into a little portion of it. And the bottom, and then I'm gonna create a line from this point down to the bottom. Um, and I need to pick up more paint, but I'm just creating a little bit of a shadow on the bottom half of oh, so I went from the halfway point of where that triangle meets kind of like where the tip of the arrow is that faces into the head I'm going to the bottom half and then creating a line to that very tip area of the beak does that make sense yeah. okay and I'm just coloring that color ever so slightly And then I'm just going to add a little bit of shading, that same small amount, just to the top, just as a line. And then I'm going to clean my brush, dampen it down. So right now I'm going to create a little bit of a gradient. So I'm softening up that line. So I cleaned my brush and then I'm, I'm, I'm dabbing it off on my uh, cloth. And then I'm going to take it and just with the tip of my brush, touch that area and kind of pull that down a little bit. And that removes that hard edge and creates a softness. Does that make sense what I just did? Okay, perfect. And if it's still too dark, you can always just dry off your brush again and then do that again and then continue to like lift up that area. Does that make sense? So I just took a little bit of that air, that color. I added it on cause it's not, it's not dark enough for my liking. Added it on right to the top of the brush of the beak. But now I have two hard edges, right? 
Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. So now I have two hard edges and I want this to be more of like a fade because that's how a shadow works usually. Like that's a way of a shadow works. So I'm cleaning off my brush. I'm dabbing it off to soak up any extra mo moisture. So it's gonna work more. Um, it's gonna work more like we are picking up kind of more color. So then I'm gonna go to the tip with just the tip of my brush. See how I'm only touching the tip of my brush. And I'm gonna start going back and forth and just kind of messing up that hard edge. And then I can do that again. I can keep on kind of drying off my brush. And see how that created more of like a fade? So if I do a demonstration of that on the other side of this painting, what I'm, I'm gonna take a really dark color. So I'm taking this black, right? And see how right now it has two very hard edges on each side. So then I'm going to clean my brush off of any color. I'm dabbing it off, soaking up any excess. And then I'm just going with the tip of my brush going to start pulling down. Tip of my brush, start pulling down. I'll clean my brush again, dab it off, and I can continue to start creating that gradient looking effect, right? So I'm messing it up, pulling it down, and then I'm cleaning off my brush and I'm almost going to go the opposite way now where I'm pushing up now to kind of create this gradient effect, this fade from color to no color. Does that make sense what I'm doing? Kind of. It's a little bit more of like an advanced technique. You really have to understand the brush because you're kind of doing a lifting. You're doing like a gradient lifting almost. And it creates this beautiful like subtle effect. Nope, that's still wet. Okay, um, since that's wet, I'm just going to switch to my tiniest, tiniest little brush. I'm going to pick up some of that gray that we just put used for the beak. And I'm just going to trace these lines. I'm gonna have to go darker because my lines are already very dark. Keeping an eye on the time. All right, we're halfway through. Oof, this class goes fast, ma'am. For some reason, this class specifically goes a lot faster than all my other classes does. Really? Yeah. It's interesting. Did you do the, uh, the triangle there underneath as well in the darker? No, because yeah, that's a red and, a, and that really dark black. Oh. Yeah. So that's all I'm doing right now. Hi, Patricia. 
It's nice to see you're here. So I'm gonna wait for that to dry. We can start adding texture to our bird now. Um, the way that I like to add texture is I'm going to go with, go with your smaller brush and then I'm going to grab some of that color. So I'm gonna start with the red. I'm gonna start uh, going with that color and I'm going to start kind of with rows adding like just kind of little lines. Yeah, we're adding the feathers. So then I'm going to go to the next line, adding feathers. Now the next line, adding feathers. Next line, adding feathers. Yep, I'm just creating little lines in like kind of rows almost. And jump around because that'll give the air time to dry. So I just, so I realized that this was blending in like really, really strongly. So then I'm jumping around, I jump to the head of the bird, which will give this time to dry. So now I can go back in and start creating more. And because that layer is going to be dry and watercolor is transparent, we're going to be able to see the hints of feathers. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. You're doing red or brown? I'm doing it with red right now. I'm just creating texture on my no, bird. No, 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 no. Nope, the same red. It's just, um, it's another layer of red, so it's going to look darker. Does that make sense? Wow. Yeah, yes. okay. Once I get onto the back, I'm going to make my feathers longer because the feathers get longer as they go down the body. The head, the head, that hair that goes up or this side? It goes around. Goes around. Yes. Great question. I don't know much about the bird, so. <laughs> yeah, yes. It goes around. So then I'm going to skip the yellow and I'm going to go to the green because this is dry brush. We want, we don't want these to fade in. Ooh. Um, from what I can see, that looks really nice. There's oh. good texture there. Yes. So, <laughs> so I'm going to jump to the green. Do you do the same texturing at the top of his head? Yes, but I went around the skull, right? Because that's how the hair grows. Yes. That's what Mitt was asking. Oh. Yeah. I love these questions, you guys. You guys are asking really smart questions. And then I'm going to go in with some red for these feathers at the bottom. But 
I'm allowing it to be one solid line because the tail feathers are actually very long. And then I'll go in bl with blue over top of that when it's dry. But we're doing dry brush right now, so we don't want um, we don't want them to blend together. So you're going to be able to go um, with okay. another layer. Okay. Oh, okay. Ooh, nice. I like this texture you got going on. <laughs> no, you don't. Ugh, I'm the, this texture looks great in the head. Um, you That's lost like your it. yellow again. Again. Yes. Sorry. It's okay. We'll add, we'll add more yellow again. I'm not jealous. <laughs> no, the yellow is the oh, color yeah. for jealousy. For jealousy? Okay. No, it's not jealousy. Yeah, okay. So maybe, anyway, we don't want it to be yellow, so you, this is fun too. I, of course. I love the texture you have going on. Okay, now nice. I get to try the, 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 the green. Yes. So now we have to do the blue feathers, right? No. Yes, but wait till the green are dry. Uh -huh. So I, I moved to the tail feathers. I added a layer of yellow over top, but I added them in one solid line stroke because the tail feathers are very long, right? They're not short, and they're super long. So I added them in just single lines. Of yellow. Of the, of, of the red. Oh, okay. Of the red, yeah. And then once that dries, I'm going to go in with like hints of uh, blue. But I don't want my colors to mix right now, so I'm allowing each of my layers to dry. Make sense? Perfect. Can you use the red and blue? Yes. Same straight lines. Yep, straight lines. They're not all touching either, so it's creating some of that texture. Right, there are areas that are not touching. Like if you look really close, like the, there's spaces in between here and near the bottom. You see that? That next layer. So every single layer is going to add like um, a mark of detail and of texture. I think this class passes a lot faster because like it's not as rushed as some of my other ones are because like some of my other ones it's like you have to get a painting done every single time whereas this one I feel less rushed because like everyone's like hey let's take our time <laughs> let's 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 do a painting over two classes instead of one yeah 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 well like this summer I sit by the water Absolutely, but you have to understand how the water moves in order to capture that properly, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it changes all the time. Absolutely, but waves, like waves, happen on a very specific like note, right? So they like come in and then they roll underneath. So like the way that that happens, that's why the froth happens, is because it keeps on mixing mixing up, and then. If there's rocks in it, how does the water move over the rocks, right? Mm -hmm. So that changes everything. And like, um, yeah, and yeah. the understanding of that, like, yeah. so sitting there and just like looking at it and observing it for like, like my grandpa created a painting that of like uh, waves crashing into stones. And he was like, I sat by that water and just watched it for like three hours and just started to understand how it worked. Because if you understand how the movement works, how the light hits it, how it yes. creates shadows, 
then you're going to be able to capture that in your painting instead of going in and just kind of going for it and hoping that it's going to work. And then at the end, it's like either it works or it doesn't work. <laughs> Once I started understanding how flowers and how leaves work and how the sun hits it kind of thing, all of a sudden, all my like flowers and my leaves started looking more realistic because I could capture them properly. And I knew what was happening, right? Yeah. Like I was dry, I was uh, painting a monk's hood plant and I had no idea what was happening until I realized that like, there's actually this hood that covers up the plant kind of thing, which is why it's called a monk's, uh, monk's hood. But having that understanding of, okay, this, like having an understanding of what all the uh, individual elements are and how they inter and how they play with each other and how they lay over top of each other and what shadows are going to cast and stuff. It's a hard process to explain, but is it starting to make, like, do you understand where I'm yeah, going for? Yeah. I'm also thinking wildflowers are probably a better place to start than water. Absolutely, yes. You know, yeah. I'm getting through information because yeah I, I look at the lake sometimes it's very quiet in the morning and it's got diamonds on it we all bring this oh diamonds on the lake today That's they great. don't last long but i think flowers would be better for me because i do i do yeah yeah oh well, long time and that botan the botanical garden has that whole area that's just lilies mm -hmm. and like lilies are fairly like decent flower to start with to understand because there's like like only like five to eight petals kind of thing and the stamen's really long and and everything yeah, so there you go yeah yeah i don't love those yeah yeah but they're like crocuses are going to start popping up white lilies that's a good intense that was very intense yes um Yep, crocus are go, are starting to pop out. They're going to be. Yeah, the crocus. That'd be a good one. Yeah, because there's only like four petals and they all kind of create this like overall teardrop shape. And then even the greenhouse has, I took some pictures of like hyacinth. Yes, beautiful flowers. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's a good idea. So flowers. They don't move. Yes, they don't move. Right? <laughs> they don't move. They move to the sun, but so slowly. Yeah, I got a lot. Okay, so I kind of right now I'm. I really want this bird to start looking like a bird. <laughs> it already looks like a bird, but I want to add in the depth right now. I think crazy, not the ready. Yes, so I want to add the black part because that's really going to help define the bird. So with my smallest brush, I'm going to pick up a lot of that color. I am loading up my paintbrush with that color. That's the dark. The yeah. dark yeah. brown yeah. that we created. Yeah. And I'm gonna go in and I'm really going to be careful. And I can tell that it's going to change. I'm going to change this shape a little bit because I don't like, I'm not in love with my shape, but um, yeah, do whatever works for you. But I want it to go under the chin a little bit. I want this to come out. And so it's super, super dark. Now that all that area is wet, I can pick up more of that color and I can just kind of drop it in there and it's going to spread and like really saturate that area with color. So it's basically almost black at this point. I'm gonna do the eye as well. For the eye though, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a little tiny circle within that eye of white.
So I've created a little tiny circle of white inside the eye to help it look like it's shiny, right? And then this is also going to cast a line, a shadow underneath the beak. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do a hard, hard line, just like that, under my beak. And that's it. That's all I'm doing with the dark color. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Movie theory just doing blur that well. <laughs> I don't like how flat the head of my bird looks. I add a little bit of a curve to it. Yep. I just wanted to create a little bit. If your head was already a little bit curved, then leave it. But if you don't like how it looks like you can balance a pot on the top of his head, Maybe maybe add a little bit of a curve. I don't know if I can correct it. Because my head is too much up. Can I cut it? Oh. I actually like it. Yeah, I like it. I think it's good. Very neat. Yeah, but this part is way up too up, right? I mean, it's a, not necessarily. It, it, it's like a you know. Yeah, okay. It looks good to me, but otherwise you're going to have to, um, like, you're going to have to lift it off, but it's, because it's red, it's going to stain the color. The right. Like that color. It's so I would, awful, right? Yeah, I would just leave it. Okay. I'll yeah. Thank you. Correct. Yes. <laughs> Especially if you have a part that you're like, oh, that's kind of the right, wrong shape, but you've already added color there and you need to remove the color it's already like it's gonna stain the paper and it'll always be a little pink and you'll always be able to see the fact that like there you made that mistake there so it's just better to leave it sometimes yes you yeah exactly okay so the next thing that i'm going to do while i wait for that to dry is i'm going to start putting in my um feather colors right so i'm going to load up my ultramarine and I'm gonna start actually with the wings because the wing um, feathers are going to follow that shape. Now, are we using a thicker brush now? I'm using my number two brush or number four, sorry. So I'm going to start following the shape of that wing. And I'm overlapping them a bit too, which is creating that illusion of like w feathers kind of layering over each other.
also going, oops, sorry guys. I'm also going to start adding in some hints of blue within the tail feather. But I'm being very like purposefully thin with my um with my feathers because I want them to look like they're in between the red. I want there to look like there's a combination of blue and red feathers within this, these tail. So if you look up close. You can see how I added in little hints of blue. This is for your reading. It's not just continuous lines. I should break it up. I, I did. If you yeah. like the way that this looks, yeah, I, I definitely broke it up. Yeah. Okay. And I layered them over each other too. Okay. And the thing is, is you can continue to add layers once all your layers are dry to add more texture to them. And then when you do the back, once your wings dry, because we're working fairly dry brush right now, so they should dry, your layers should dry pretty quickly. You made a mistake? That's okay. No problem. <laughs> That's okay. You can have it blue as the bottom part. It's not a big deal. Yes. Mikas have that all the time. So then what's going to help separate the back from the wing is that the back, the feathers are always going to go down and point towards the, the bottom, right? And they're a lot shorter in comparison. But also we're going to be adding some shadow. So don't be too um, obsessed with it. it has to look absolutely different because it's not at the beginning. We're gonna go in and we're gonna add some shadow in here. So we're going to add a lot more depth than I added into this painting since this is gonna go longer than just two hours. <laughs> The, the shadow, how to add the shadow? Is it a different color or just a more forward? We are going to kind of mix this shadow color that we created, the brown, in a little bit with the blues and the green and the yellow and the um, the red. Uh, after it's completely dry. Yes, correct. I also realized that I haven't done any of my yellow uh, feathers. So I'm going to go in and do some of my yellow feathers. And I'm actually going in with, um, like you can go in with a cadmium red, but if you want it dark like mine, I'm going in with a yellow ochre because, um, I want them to show through a little bit. There you go. So now all of our parrots have are entirely covered by texture. Yay. <laughs> yes.
well, money doesn't have much of a come for us in 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 the the yeah. wing. Yeah, 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 that's okay. We we have to create. Yeah, we have to create that contrast. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're good. Yes. One thing that I don't uh, like on this is this part here. I just don't feel like I have this right. Okay. Um, what you can do is. Does that look better for you? Yes, it does. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry. Good for you to go darker in the room. She put a little red in it. Okay. You know something? I uh, I couldn't uh, erase the, the, the pencil right. properly. Right. And uh, because I have drawn it quite good from the beginning. Okay, yes. And after that, I can try to correct something. And don't work out. No, okay. Me. So, well, I think. Uh, if you want to leave it light, go ahead and leave it light. Absolutely. It's your, it's your painting. It's not my painting. <laughs> No, I'm trying to find. Oh, I see. Okay. If not, I have to. Okay. I know. I know. I know. I hate someone. Somewhere. So we worked fairly dry brush. So my body is already kind of almost dry, which means that I'm going to start adding in the contrast between the back and the wing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my color, which is my ultramarine blue, put them right over here. And then I'm going to take some of that shadow color that we've created. And I'm going to combine those two until I get like a nice, rich, dark blue. Oh, and I went too, too brown, so now it's green. So I'm going to go back with the blue. Oh, my turn. Too. Yep, my so go back out with blue. It basically is a Payne's Gray, yes. So we basically created a Payne's Gray. That's it? Or somewhere else? This one? Yeah. Where did you find it? Oh, I just oh, said. Yeah, yeah, they have big ones too. I just want to really so now I'm going to go in and really add in that like contrast. And I'm pulling up. I'm going to go underneath. I'm also going to add a slight amount underneath the um, the green as well, just because it'll look like the layer of green is casting a shadow on the layer blue over top of it. So I went a little bit darker right here and a lot darker right here. And you can use this color as well for the shadows. So if I do a light wash, if I really wet my brush, dab off any extra, pick up a little bit of that blue, I can start adding a light wash of that color to start adding in like small 
details of shadow. So like underneath the chin would be a good spot for it. Right in this corner right here where it looks, it'll help it look like the head has turned. I'm gonna put a little bit in the crown. Oops, that's way too dark. Go in and add like just little bits throughout the wing. Just thin lines. Add a little bit underneath the yellow to make it look like the yellow fat feathers are casting a shadow on the green feathers. So you're just adding water to Um, I'm adding a like just a very light layer of that paint gray that we created. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like a very, very light layer. And I'm not, I'm instead of doing that over top of the um, the yellow because it's gonna turn green, I'm just gonna go in with a little more yellow ochre and then just add in a little bit of a hint underneath the red. So that the, the yellow is over the red or red is underneath the ochre? The red is over top of the yellow. So I added in a like a small hint of yellow ochre right um below the red to make it look like the red is casting a shadow on the yellow. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. You're welcome. We're getting some really nice texture out of these birds, guys. It's very nice. I think my bird need a little cooking. <laughs> this one, I'm waiting for this to try to paint it back. Okay. Is it's it trying to do shadow? Yeah. It went away with itself. No, it's not too much. So all you have to do is lift it a little bit. See how I just spread it out? Okay, you're finished one. I'm not going to put anything else. Oh, I love their texture. I think it's beautiful. Good texture. Yes, there it is. I think you're right. It's very nice. I think it's a good idea. I like it. It looks good. And I really like this right here. Yeah. That looks really nice. Yeah. That like little curve. Absolutely. Um. Okay. So the last thing I'm going to do with my parrot, and then our parrots are done. And then we can just focus on the background next time. The last thing I'm doing with my parrot is I'm going to add in this little bit of blush over top of the eye, this triangle. And then if you have room, you can add these, uh, the red lines. So the right. blush you're going to do with the red? With the same the red. Line. Yep. Just a lot less of it. So I'm picking up my red and I put it down. And that's way too much. So I'm going to clean off my brush and I'm just going to spread out what is on there now. It's almost like a pink. Yeah. 
Yep, correct. Can I see it on the other picture, please? If you can see it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's right. Yep. So now this one's finished. So these are what they look like. I think I'm using a kind of hybrid technique. Okay. I love that. <laughs> Do what works for you. I understood, but uh, I should learn a little bit more because I told you I am very using the color pens. So. <laughs> yeah, you're used to color pencils? Yeah. And I use the, the smallest. Uh, you see, like. Yep, you're you're using it yeah, like yeah. you're you're drawing almost. Yep. So um, I used color pencils for the first time this year, and I found actually like they kind of translated decently, like with the fading and stuff. Like it was almost like the same technique, but with the pencils instead of the paints. I think I have to use more to, to realize watercolor. What is can, what is that on top of this eye, the one you just did right This? Now? We didn't have any. Pencil. Yeah, we didn't have any oh, pencil. Okay. So if you have the mark, if you have the space for it, because I moved back the eye, so I actually ended up getting more space. If you have the space for it, you can add these. If not, that's okay. You don't have to at all. Yeah. So looks like my bird is finished now. I'm happy with him. Uh, you don't put anything on the beak or anything on this? Just a little bit of white? Just, a, yep, a little bit white. What you can do if you really want to add definition into the, be into the beak is you can take a little bit of that dark black kind of paints gray we created. And I just added a little bit of a line here. And now I'm going to drag that in. And it creates a little bit of a shadow on the beak and adds a little bit of three dimensionality if you want to add that. It's not necessary, but you can if you want to. You can also like go in and like add like little little scuffs if you wanted to. Because birds kind of use their like beak to like beat into like trees and stuff. So they tend to be like more, they're not nice and like smooth. So you can add like little bits of texture if you wanted to. That's only if you want to though. I want to lighten mine up a little bit. So I'm going to go. Well, I, just, I, didn't, okay. I don't want to mess up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free, if you don't like what you just did, you can always like wet it again and then pick it up with a paper towel, pressing really hard on it. Like, I'm just gonna get rid of that because I don't like that. There we go. Cool, so now our birds are done, yay. Yay. How do we feel about our birds, guys? Oh, you. oh, you're very welcome. No, it was Well, it was part of the drawing. I see birds, all right. <laughs> Works. Very nice. So your uh, your face is very good. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, I'm very trying to do it. Let's see here. No, it'll help to have some time. Absolutely. Everybody also, if you guys. Oh, big 
Okay, so I would suggest, Sorry. I would suggest not to clean your palettes because we're using, we're using, if you already did whatever, <laughs> but we're using the same colors next week. So I would say just to keep your colors, you know, you don't have to waste your paint, you don't, you don't, it's expensive. <laughs> Mine isn't One thing that I find here, I don't like this. I didn't bring my one down here. This looks like him. If I take that triangle, we made it the I would. Yes. Yeah, yes. Oh, you yeah. I would. Oh, it's nice. It's oh. not that different, but it's uh, no, no, no. beautifully done. Well, thank, thank you. you. I didn't know what you were doing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so they're very good. Yeah. 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 Oh, the flowers, that's it. Yeah, if you and want that look, because it's like, because see so how much, these are kind of like coming out and not really following the line and kind of just half ass really place there. Yes, because I added this in a, in a space after. Pick a direction and then stick with the direction. And if I want to have words, like it's going to be an invitation. Do the words first and then go around. Uh -huh. What you could also do, if it's going, okay, if you're going in a direction, what you can also do, what you can also do is like do a circle, yeah. a big circle, yeah. and you like lots of about the part of time, yeah, and then yeah. you can do the class, yeah. yes. 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 the class, yes. you know, because I'm like, well, like, well, all the way around, you know, they all have the same thing. Pick a direction, yeah, pick a direction, so they're either going to go out. From the center, yeah, or you're going to go all <laughs> That's good. I like to go to the I like to go to the center. 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 I like to you frosting or something. You thought it was not so Or we could use it to mix other colors. I think it's going to be Or we could use it to mix other colors. I think it's going to be Or we could use it to mix other colors. Or we I would almost like, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to do little things like this, yeah, but I would almost like pop some of these out yeah. that you're never going to use and then you can replace them. I have no black, no brown. I don't even know what these colors are actually. Yeah, yeah. you have purple, purple which is yeah. weird. I love the purple, but. And then this, this color, like, like you don't. Blue. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that blue might actually need. You never need three blue. Like you've true. never even touched this no, one. No, so I would pop this one out. Yeah. I would yeah. probably pop the purple out because it can make purple so easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But these two different reds are different. Yeah. That's an orange. Okay. Pop the orange out because you can like you can mix an orange so easily. Yeah. Oh, with yeah. red and yellow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the proportion is blue. The colors are still fun. Yeah. It's, it's a good. No, I have fun because. Yeah. It's it's a, a kind of dark. It's not big. Mm -hmm. Not a lot. Okay. So then you would like you probably look at it again and again until you got that vividness. Yeah. So the, the, with the layers. Thing, with layers. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, because each layer you add is going to get darker and darker and darker and more vivid. Okay. I think sense. about yeah. yeah. Of course, it makes sense, but I think to yeah feel what else. Maybe you put a layer of pink. Over top of this. Cool. Like, like, yeah, yeah, like um, this, like a lizard and crimson, I think, like this color. Can put a layer of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, like, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, oh you're talking about for Yeah, that's why I have to, you know, not go home. Eat and come back. So I brought everything. So <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, you're taking the drawing card? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. No, she owns her, but she's going to take the. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I'm, because uh, the other one is uh, the being sick. Yes, she's been sick. So, oh. like, I'm taking over for it. So. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yay. <laughs> because I want to like, I, I'm using this kind of like as a meditative interview kind of thing to see what you guys have already done. I don't mind, do you do with your way. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. So see you guys. Bye. 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 Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, it's, it's something very oh, personal. Okay. I come here because I like to do something without too much thinking. Yep. Yeah. It's it's it's, it's natural. It's just meditative, you know. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I don't want to think too much. Yes. Yeah. Because I think. Yeah. From eight o'clock until the big yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'd like yeah. And that's why the time goes by fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the spirit is your And yes. I think it it uh, bring something very personal to us mm -hmm. if we don't think too much. <laughs> Analyze it. <laughs> we just enjoy it. Ourselves. Well, it's a nice group too. Yeah. Bye, Patricia. Thanks for coming. Very nice group.